In this video I want to finish assembling this board and I'm going to begin by coming back to my mix of solder paste and flux and get a good healthy amount down here and prep for the components that we now have to add. Again just a little extra flux, not a lot, don't need a lot of flux here. I just find diluting the solder paste with a little extra flux helps make it a little more easy to get it on the board. I'm just going to start dabbing solder paste on all these little pads here. The voltage regulator here, uh, we're going to use the same trick as we did with the uh, microcontroller, which is go ahead and throw a bunch of solder paste on there. And then when it's flowing, we will push down on the voltage regulator and get all of the excess solder to squeeze out. Now I'll grab my box of components here and start pulling out the things that I need and placing them on the board. I have my two amp voltage regulator. Here it is, it came in a tape reel just like the microcontroller. We can just peel the tape off and get one of those out. And just like the microcontroller, this thing has a dot on it that will tell you where it needs to go. If you look on the PCB, just above where it says C3 over here, there is a dot. There is also a dot on the uh, voltage regulator. Those two need to be next to each other. There is the dot. Do you see it on the bottom there? So that means I need to rotate this and then just drop it into place. That looks pretty good. All right, now we have all the other components that need to go on there. Next, I'll grab one of these uh, voltage regulators for the microcontroller. Now I'm going to grab two one microfarad capacitors that go with the smaller voltage regulator. It looks like I might have some flux on the end of my um, tweezers here that are causing components to stick. That can sometimes be helpful, sometimes it can be a hindrance, so I'm going to clean those off with a little IPA. 10 kilo ohm resistor. I only need one. I'm going to rotate the PCB 90 degrees. It's just going to make applying these next few components easier. That's the 10 kilo ohm resistor. Next I have a 3.3 microhenry inductor. Uh, this inductor along with uh, C7 provides something of a low pass filter. Basically it means that a bunch of high frequency noise that gets generated by turning the LEDs and the blade on and off very quickly get blocked by these two things. Without this, what would happen is all that high frequency noise, the LEDs turning on and off, would make its way back to the hilt, which impacts the, uh, the audio amplifier in the microcontroller that's in the hilt, and you would get like a 10 kilohertz tone coming out of your speaker. And then these should be 10 microfarad capacitors. I need two. Oops. Remember to take your time. Patience is very much a virtue with this sort of thing.
Sure, C6 looks like it's lopsided to one side in terms of position. C3 as well. We could adjust those, but I'm actually going to leave them like that just so we can see the magic of uh, hot air. All right, so back to reflow now. I'm going to start out again at about a 4 on the nozzle speed, the air speed coming out, and it's going to take about a minute to two minutes to warm up the board and the tile and all of that stuff, and then once everything's warmed up, you'll start to notice the solder paste will sort of lose its gloss, and I will probably at that point increase the speed to about a five or a six maybe, and that should finish the process. That should start to get everything flowing. Uh, the temperature I'm using is 350 degrees C. So anyways, let's begin. So I'm going to start out a couple inches above the board and just circulate hot air all over the place here. You can sort of see that uh, inductor L1 there dancing a little bit from the air blowing at it. You can see some of that shine starting to go away. All right, I'm going to start to bump up the speed a little bit up to a five. Bumping it up a little bit more because I don't see the components dancing, which means they're fairly well stuck to the board and should survive a little faster air. Remember, the faster the air, the more heat you're putting on the board, so the faster everything will come up to temperature. There we go, stuff is starting to flow. There we go. Very good. Very good. Now we need to do that little tap trick on the voltage regulator here. It lost its temperature when I went to grab the tweezers, of course. There we go, you see it jiggling? Alright, so the, the nozzle's back in the cradle, fan speed went up to 9, so that way this will cool quickly. Uh, you saw that uh, voltage regulator jiggle and then settle back into place when I tapped it from above. That lets me know that it has seated itself and is all lined up. You can see the excess solder squirted out around the sides. We'll clean that up just like we cleaned up the microcontroller and uh, we should be good to go. Now it's time to clean up the voltage regulator. Just going to add a little extra flux around the voltage regulator there. Come in with my iron here and just clean that up. Um, it looks like there might be a little solder ball on the side here. Let me see if I can get that with the iron. Maybe I could transfer a little extra solder over there. Yeah, like that. Because that pad looked like it, it didn't have a lot of solder on it. And that's another thing you can do is you could touch up all of these joints here if anything looks a little off. There might be a solder ball here. Solder balls are when solder paste flows, but it doesn't find a pad to connect to. and sort of just forms into a little ball. It's just a thing that happens with solder paste. And... 
you have to clean it up because those things can come loose and might roll across to the microcontroller and sit between two pins and create a connection that shouldn't be there. Um, so there'll be a spot at the end of soldering where we're going to clean the board with a brush and isopropyl alcohol, and that will hopefully get rid of any little solder balls that are still around. Now, one more thing I want to do before I continue is do a quick resistance check. This is just a quick check to make sure there are no major issues with the soldering so far. Um, it's set to measure resistance. You can go across power and ground here, or you can go across the terminals for capacitor C1, which isn't there yet. And we don't see a short. In fact, we see the resistance going up a little bit. We're charging the capacitor, which is expected because there are capacitors between power and ground. So that's normal. That's good. And I also want to do the same over here. And we see the same behavior. We see a capacitor charging up. From the power side of things, it looks like we're good. The voltage regulators are in fine. Uh, there's no major shorts here. So I am comfortable with proceeding to the other half of the board and soldering that. I'll bring back my solder paste and toothpick method and start applying more solder. All right, there we go. So I have seven one kilo ohm resistors that I need to put down. Where did I drop that? I don't know where I dropped that that one. Oh, I dropped another one. Did they both go in the hole? <sighs> okay, I see one. Come here, you. These resistors have a dark side and a light side. Traditionally, the dark side should be facing up, but it doesn't really matter. I know one more went flying somewhere. I don't know where it went. So got another one. All the resistors are down. That is by far the most annoying and tedious part of this build. I'm going to do the MOSFETs next. They control the color of the blade. They're basically just switches that you can control electrically. You want red, turn on the red switch. You want green, turn on the green switch. You want yellow, turn on the red and green switch. That sort of thing. Now for bipolar junction transistors, these control power to the four different segments of the blade. They are also basically electrical switches. You want to make a blade look like it's uh, igniting in sequence. You turn on switch one for the 
segment of LEDs closest to the, the base of the blade and then turn on switch two, wait a little bit, turn on switch three, wait a little bit, turn on switch four, and you have a blade that has ignited. That's what these do. Let's review and see if anything's a little bit in need of adjustment. Maybe I nudge this one as well as this one. But I probably didn't have to. The surface tension of the molten solder pulls the components to the pads for you. That's how you got the microcontroller to align and the voltage regulator to align and a few of those littler components you saw, they were at an angle, and then they suddenly straightened up. That's the surface tension. All right, components are down. More hot air. Same process as before. And then we're, we're near the end of all the soldering that we have to do. Okay, back to four on the nozzle, and here we go. Okay, a couple of things to take care of. I see where the extra resistor is now. There we go. And then this one, although it's making a fine connection, I still see one pad here that hasn't flowed yet. Two of them. There we go. Okay. I just want to do a little cleanup of the joints here. This is not necessary, but again, I like things looking professional. So I'm just going to blob a bunch of flux all over the top of the PCB here. And I'm just going to come through with my iron and touch all of the joints. Help make sure that, you know, there's a good connection there because a couple of these didn't look quite great. And this isn't a step that you necessarily will have to do. See, now those joints look just, they look more full, and that's what I wanted. The resistors are probably fine. There's no real need to go and touch those up. But you could, if you wanted to, I suppose, come in and just, you know, one side at a time. And I'm not doing each side, you know, one right after the other of the same tr resistor. I want the solder to have time to cool down a little bit. 
Otherwise, I risk the other side being still being molten and potentially um, pulling the uh, the resistor off of the pad. All right, that looks good. Um, I'm going to clean this up with some isopropyl alcohol and then do an inspection. I've moved off the tile and back onto the silicone mat to continue my clean. Now I am going to use this brush here to brush at the components. You could use a toothbrush. My goal here is to bring the brush across every side of every component to try and scrub out any little loose balls of uh, solder that may have found a home somewhere. You can see I'm coming in at, as an, at an angle here so I can get right at that point where the component and the PCB meet because that's where if there's any loose balls of solder that's where they're going to be. And you want to keep the board coated in isopropyl alcohol. It will uh, dissolve the flux that could help keep a stubborn ball of solder uh, stuck to the board. And then to clean up the isopropyl alcohol, which will have flux dissolved in it. I'm using, this is a Kimtech wipe or a Kim wipe. You probably see these in like doctor's offices. Uh, their benefit is that they're lint free. So while they might tear, they're not gonna leave little fibers all over the board. So that's why I use them. And I basically just cover the board in one poke at it from every angle with the brush and you can see it sort of helps absorb any remaining isopropyl alcohol and there is our cleaned board just want to make sure that you know joints look good you know looking at that microcontroller there you can see five distinct pins there no no bridges between them that's the sort of thing I'm looking at I'm making sure nothing is uh, standing up off the board I want to make sure I've got a good solder joint everywhere. The most common place you're going to run into an issue is going to be on the microcontroller on the side with the capacitor next to it. That middle pin is connected to ground. And because it's connected to ground, it sometimes doesn't come up to temperature as quickly as the other components in the area. And the solder might not flow correctly on it. In fact, you can see there's like a little peak of solder coming off of that pin. And if it bridged one of the nearby pins, that would be a bad thing, and you have to go in there and fix it. Um, and you can see that there's still a little bit of a peak there, and let's call that a bridge, and let's say I need to fix it. To fix it, I'm going to grab some extra flux. Bring in my iron and my... Uh, solder and I'm just going to put a little ball of solder on the end of the iron and run that across. So let's get that little ball of solder there. Run that across. And one thing you can do is you can actually with a tip that's been cleaned bring it to the side of the component, put it on the pin, and drag away. And that can also help remove bridges that you might have. It's kind of hard to tell right now with all the flux in the way, so I'm going to clean that flux off, and we'll see if I made things worse or better. doesn't look any better. So I'm going back in and I'm going to apply my iron for much longer than I did before. Again, thermal mass. All right, cleaned up a little bit. So in the end, here's what I did. I put some flux down between the capacitor and the chip. I brought in my iron and if you notice the iron has a curved section. I put it in sideways like this up against the chip, sort of like that. Held it there for maybe 15 seconds and then pulled down towards the capacitor and up to remove it from the PCB. And that cleaned it up. And it looks okay now. 
It was probably okay before, and I shouldn't have tried to fix things that weren't broken, but... Anyways, we've got the PCB. It's just about finished. There's one more step, but our time with the microscope is over. One more thing to go. It is the capacitors, the electrolytic capacitors that go at C7 and C1 down at the bottom here. Brought out the vise to make my life a little easier. The electrolytic capacitors have two leads. One is longer than the other. The longer one is positive. The shorter one is negative. There's also a stripe on the negative lead. The negative side has to go towards the center of the PCB. And I want to leave, I don't know, a centimeter, a little less than a centimeter uh, of lead below the PCB. So I'm just going to bend those leads on the top side out so the capacitor stays where it is. And I want to do the same thing for the second capacitor. And I want the, the spacing to be the same. There we go. Now I just need to solder the leads. And that's where the vise comes in. The ground of this PCB has high thermal mass. So I am going to put my iron across the negative lead of one of these. I'm going to leave it there for a few seconds because I need to heat up all of that thermal mass. And then I'll bring in my solder. And if it flows, great. And if it doesn't, I'm going to keep my iron there for a little while longer. There we go. I want to quickly do the negative lead of the other capacitor again while all that heat is stored in the PCB. All right, good. Now I'll do the outer legs. Which don't take nearly as long because there's much less thermal mass there. Now I'll just come in and cut those leads. And now I want to take these capacitors and I want to bend them 90 degrees. Um, and I want the bend to be as close to the capacitor itself as possible. Something like that. And that is going to help us get the capacitors to fit inside the blade. And there is a finished blade controller ready to be installed. Um, before I install this one, uh, I'm going to test it. I have a jig that lets me test these things. Um, you probably won't have that test jig, and you're not going to know if it's going to work until you install it in your blade. But chances are, as long as you've got all those pins as individual pins on your microcontroller, and all the, the dots on your voltage regulator and your microcontroller line up. As long as you've got uh, the PNP transistors here, the N-channel MOSFETs here, and you haven't swapped them, which I have by accident once, uh, you are pretty good to assume that it's going to work. Uh, again, make sure your programming is done as well, which we did in the first video. So I'm going to test this now. I'm going to show you my jig, and we'll see what happens. Here is my jig. It's a little PCB that's got some pogo pins up at one end and three down at the other end. They're designed to align with the blade controller upside down. I made it upside down like this because the capacitors would otherwise be in the way. And these pogo pins go out to these wires here that go over to a blade. This is a blade that's had the controller removed, so these wires are going directly to the uh, LED strip. The other three wires are going to this little blade connector thing um, that then go into, in this case, a Savvy's Workshop hilt with a white uh, crystal inside. So the idea is I put the PCB, line it up, and put it on here, and I should hear a, a blade insert noise because it picks up that the blade controller is there. And then I'll ignite it and we'll see if the blade ignites white or yellowish because the connections here aren't great. Let's see what happens. So that's a good sign. Pressing down firmly here 
I'll turn off the lights so we can see the blade. And we've got a white blade. Excellent. What I do is I cycle through to the um, the last mode, which has the individual segments of different colors. And if I see that rocket popsicle, you know, uh, what is it, red, white, blue, and then green at the base here. Um, if I see that and all the colors look correct and it, they're vibrant, um, then I can feel certain that uh, this thing has worked. And I've got a good soldering job, a good program, and now it's ready to be installed inside of a blade. So there is a finished custom blade controller for a Galaxy's Edge lightsaber blade. In the next video, we'll finish this series by installing this blade controller inside of the blade. Uh, I've been working on this project for about three years now, and we are finally near the end. If you have any questions or any concerns or comments that you want to make uh, about this series so far, about what you've seen in this video, uh, Go ahead and ask them in the comments below. Uh, I do read them, and I will try to respond to everybody who's got a question. I want to make sure that everybody who wants to make one of these has all the information that they need to do that. So if I've missed something, if there's something that you need to have clarified, then please do not hesitate to ask in the comments below. We have one more video to go. Stick around. We're almost done.